Uh, welcome, Dr. Coleman. Thank it's you. a pleasure to have you. You have a long, long list of uh, studies and uh, very important studies on the subject of uh, post-traumatic stress, post-abortion. Post Can you tell us about them? Sure. Um, in the last five or six years or so, we've published a number of studies that have linked abortion history with anxiety, depression, and substance use and abuse is one of the um, less easily detected um, effects of abortion, uh, but there, we have published a few studies or other studies um, out there on that topic, and um, it seems to be one of the most common ways that women deal with the trauma, the, you know, the pain, the, the suffering, without having to disclose the nature of their or the source of their problem. Uh, in the United States, it's very easy to obtain a, a, a prescription for Xanax or you know, a tranquilizer or antidepressive medication. And um, so I think for a lot of women, they, they suffer alone, they medicate that way. Um, and so it's, it's an enormous problem that I think we're just touching the surface of. Lately, we've shifted gears away from the mental health effects to looking at how abortion history may impact the family, parents, um, partners in a, in a relationship, and um, because the effects do go far beyond the woman who's suffering. So that's, you know, we feel like we've pretty well established that link between abortion and anxiety and depression and substance abuse and PTSD. And so um, this just seems like the natural place to go with the further study. So, and In your studies, there's a clear difference between a, um, a spontaneous abortion and in induced abortion in the, in the incidence of trauma. Yes, well, we did once, we had one study published where we did compare, um, we haven't, other groups have done more in, the, uh, in terms of those kinds of comparisons, but we did have one study where the outcome measures was, involved substance abuse, and we, we did find that um, no effect for um, miscarriage or stillbirth, but we, with the abortion, that it was a dramatic increase in substance use that persisted, so. Um, yeah, I think that's an important comparison because the, the studies that have been conducted um, in Europe, the researcher is Brown, B-R-O-E-N, uh, she found that uh, initially women who had a voluntary and involuntary perineal loss had similar levels of PTSD um, symptomatology. And then when you f she followed them to two years and five years and found that um, the women who had the non-voluntary losses had pretty much resolved the psychological trauma. Um, you know, most were doing fine two years and five years later, but for the women who aborted, it persisted at that level of about 25% at the later assessment. So it does not seem to resolve like a miscarriage and stillbirth. With uh, such consistent findings, do you, do you have any impact on the, on the medical community? And do you find it's, uh, it's compulsory to tell that to the women? Yes, I think it's very important that women are informed of the risks, and it's very difficult to um, get the professional organizations in the United States, anyway, to acknowledge the research, because it is in, we have published in good peer-reviewed journals, and so the information should be, come part of the body of knowledge, but it's, it's actively ignored. Uh, there is a, a task force that was assembled by the American Psychological Association to study the effects of abortion, and I'm serving as a reviewer for that process. Um, and our studies are now are, are, are cited, uh, so they they are maybe that's progress that they're at least acknowledging they exist. Um, but the extent to which they dismiss them, we'll, we'll have to see. Um, so it is, it, it is a battle because the journals are also tied to the professional organizations that have a socio-political agenda that's very clearly pro-choice. Um, so we go, we, we, it's much more difficult to publish anything showing negative effects of abortion. And I naively thought that once we had the papers in the journals, that people would have to pay attention to it, and it's just not the case. The professional organizations continue to ignore it for the most part to say it's bad science, despite the fact, you know, one of our studies was in the American Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology where we found women who had a, um, an abortion in the subsequent subsequent pregnancy uh, reported 10 times the marijuana use and, and alcohol was increased cigarette smoking and so th there's a you know a dramatic effect in a ve very um, difficult journal and yet they dismiss the studies if they have one methodological flaw and any study is going to have some limitations so um, 
so the, you know, it is tough because it, getting, getting them published is the first obstacle and then getting the professional organizations to, to, to acknowledge it. And then, and then once you get um, sort of beyond that point, it's the average person and how do we get the liberal media to pay attention. And, um, and so, you know, if a study is published, there was one published by Rousseau in the British Medical Journal and um, using the same data that we had used, she just reconfigured the variables and uh, her bottom line conclusion from that report was that there wasn't any association between abortion and depression and it was blasted in every newspaper all over the world. And we're lucky if we get a, a you know, one or two newspapers that cover a, an article when it's published. And it's usually a conservative. Or, uh, the Christian media has, has done a great job of publicizing the work but um, still the women who are the average person considering an abortion or the average doctor or counselor working with women just doesn't get this information. So. Do you find that there are women out there that because it's not recognized they won't get help? Um, they may not. Yeah, I think there are probably hundreds and thousands of women out there suffering alone, maybe fearful of telling their spouses or uh, parents and or children, be embarrassed. There's a shame and embarrassment and guilt, and so um, they may be, you know, uh, not. They may not even want to acknowledge it to a trained professional or a family. So. Yeah, I, I think in all the speaking that I've done and conversations with clinicians, it does seem like there are many, many uh, women out there who just don't, there isn't anybody to turn to with, you know. Okay, so. thank you. Thank you. Thank you.